My name is Rai Chintos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you so much for taking this time and being with us yeah, today. I'm very, very excited because I got a lot of questions for you. So <laughs> I'm really ready. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm ready, ready to answer. I told you that I was going to put you on spot. Hey, don't worry. <laughs> hey, I, this is my world. I, I used to play professional football in the NFL. So being on the spot is what I do, man. Awesome, awesome. So go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. I don't want to butcher it. You do so many things. Yeah. I tried to memorize your bio, but uh, <laughs> it's too much, man. Tell yeah, us what uh, uh, you're passionate about. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know if I've memorized my bio yet. Uh, my name is Anthony Trucks. I'm a former NFL athlete uh, turned serial entrepreneur, American Ninja Warrior, um, speaker, author, online coach. My realm of expertise is identity. I help people upgrade their identity so they can make shift happen in their life, which is about identity shift. So in my world now, man, I spend a lot of time on stages. I'm a keynote speaker around the world, so I hop on stage and, and, and talk. I have a blast telling cool old stories from my childhood and foster care and all other stuff. And then I work with people like Amazon executives. I work with large little corporations where I teach them how to help their company shift identity and be able to reach the goals they want. And really, the end of it is how do you reach your full potential? That is my that's my jam, man. So I go through life teaching people how to how to live better lives the best way I can teach them to. The first question that comes into mind is, do you agree with working hard more or do you agree with working smart more? <laughs> There's always that. I like how it's an, an, uh, one or the other. I think it's both, right? There's, there's people who can choose to only work smart and you will get ahead based on the effort you choose to give. Um, I'm not all about just leading and not managing, right? You can lead in direction. But if you don't manage the direction you're going, you can lead yourself up the wrong wall. I am, however, a big proponent of, realize that your potential is only met when you do the right stuff. You're smart about what you do, but you work like crazy hard to get there. It doesn't mean you sacrifice all the things that matter in your life, but it means that, that you're never truly going to know that next level of great that you can't even imagine yet until you go and do the right stuff, the smart stuff, but work incredibly hard at it. I don't think we ever reach our full potential. I think every level that we reach, we find that there's more levels to reach. Perfect. Would you, would you call it a sacrifice or if I'm doing it, would you call it a choice? Mm. Because I don't feel like I'm sacrificing. I think I'm yeah. choosing yeah. to, for example, I, I do work on weekends. Yeah. Not necessarily full-blown like the way I work during weekdays, but I tend to work on Saturdays and sometimes Sundays. Mm -hmm. I do get some hours in. But yeah. to me, it's not a sacrifice. To me, it's like no. I'm making a conscious choice. Yeah. Obviously, my wife doesn't like my choice, but <laughs> it's still a choice, you know? Yeah. I'm not being forced. Nobody's putting a gun to my head, yeah. you know? I don't get extra money or extra benefit for working. I'm just choosing. So yeah. I, that's a little bit... I, I think a lot of people, I'm sacrificing this for my career. I'm not like, I don't know if you're sacrificing. You're making a choice. No. I think sacrifice is, is always seen as a negative thing, right? Sacrifice is this, like, difficult thing. Like, I got to do this thing that sucks to get this thing I want. And I, I don't think, same as you, I don't think I sacrificed. And the problem is, is I, I, earlier in my career, I, I've always worked hard. One of my buddies was like, what are you doing this week? And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm working on this project. And he goes, oh, that sucks. And I was like, why, why does it suck? Because I, I love what I do. And then I realized he was attaching how he views work to my work. And so I realized early on, like, I love what I do. Therefore, like they say, it's never actually work. It is work, but it's not sacrificial work. I am not pushed by something that forces me to have to move like, like a horse that doesn't want to move. I am pulled by a desire to give something cool to the world. I'm, I'm pulled by a desire to reach a potential that I feel that I don't even see yet. And so what you're talking about is, yeah, yeah your wife may not like it because you're, you're not there, you know, in terms of presence, maybe what she wants you to, but you're not doing drudgery. You're doing passion work. And that, in fact, doesn't drain you like sacrifice does. It fills you up. That's how I live the same way. I agree with that. So what, what's been your experience with Think and Grow Rich? Man, I think so, if you go to NFL, you don't need the book Think and Grow Rich. Oh, I you think do. you did it all already there. You do, bro. <laughs> you, you'd be surprised. I think a lot of, a lot of people re don't realize the world of the NFL, which is I'm in the NFL. All I know is how to work on this one thing. It's a very clear, delineated line. If I do this, then this happens. If I get in this position, I can make this play. If I lift weights, I get bigger. If I get faster, I can be, you know, all these things, you, you know what happens from the reaction, whereas in the world outside of professional sports, there's no telling. And the book that, that was as funny as that was the book, the very first personal development book I read. The second one was you know, a different book. Um, but that was the first book I read on a, a drive from uh, San Francisco Bay Area down to Los Angeles. I listened to it. Uh, and it was one of the books that just changed how I thought. 
right? That was the biggest thing. I had to think about how my next parts of the world were going to unfold because the truth was I left the NFL and I got into a gym business. I had my degree in kinesiology. Like, I'm going to go open this business in this area. And it's going to be great. And then it started failing big time. Like I almost went bankrupt. Everything went downhill. And, and I just, I didn't know how to fix it. Didn't know it was wrong. And then I listened to this book and sure enough, I was like, it's just the way I'm thinking because the thinking is affecting my actions. My actions are creating my outcomes. And the outcome I'd had sucked right now because my thoughts sucked because I wasn't thinking the right way, right? So it changed the way that I thought, which created my actions, which created my outcomes the way I wanted them to later on. So it just changed the way I did things. Do you – so I got a couple of questions. I know a lot of people mm -hmm. that go to an NFL or professional athletes. Yeah. I know a lot of them are not good with managing money. Yeah. I've heard and I've seen a lot of a, a lot of them. They're how do I say this? They're good at promoting themselves. They do get yeah. a lot of sponsorship, mm -hmm. but when they're out of their game, yeah. it doesn't tend to shoot up. It shoots down yeah. for most of them. So my yeah. question is this: What's different for you? Because you got business going on, you went into different fields. How mm -hmm. did that happen? Did you just wake up one day and say? okay, I want to become a life coach. I want to go speak. I yeah. want to do that. How was that transition? Was yeah, it gradually? Was it sudden? I want to know about that. It was very gradual. So the biggest thing is when you get out of the NFL, you have a big pride and ego to yourself. You got to think like we are like, I'm the best. I'm on TV. Everybody wants a piece of me. And then the reality sets in of, dude, you just played a sport. You don't have any real, real value, truthfully, for the rest of the world. Like I can't go into tech because I've tackled somebody on the sideline. Like you just, that's not how the thing works. And so we come out and here's the problem is why a lot of guys lose their money. They don't have the ability to swallow their pride and their ego and say, I'm going to now serve the world like everybody else does. And what they try to do is let their money make them money. But there are people who invest for a living and don't do it well. So just because you have money doesn't mean you're going to keep money or it's going to make you money. And so a lot of guys go in, put their money in like their buddies who's going to be a rapper and I'm going to open this laundromat and then I'm not going to take care of it. They don't get business and it falls downhill. The difference between me is like I got to this. Don't get me wrong. I got to the point I was two weeks away from bankruptcy if I couldn't figure out how to get my landlord not to sue me and evict me. I figured it out. And what I figured out was I had to drop the pride, drop the ego, hire a coach with all the rest of the money I had left. My money, my money was gone. Hired a coach who then told me what to do. And the things he made me do tugged at my soul and my ego. I had to call people I didn't know and ask for help. I had to go out of my comfort zone and like go knock on doors. I was in the middle of the night putting flyers on cars to like two in the morning. This guy that used to be in the NFL with a, a helmet, uh, millions of people watching me, I'm in the dark with my dog putting flyers on cars, right? So it's these weird little things you don't see, but that's what saved me from being another guy that went bankrupt was I realized that I am no better than anybody else. I just did something different. I've done that for my auto repair shop when I was 20 years old. Yeah. I did it from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. before everybody got up so everybody knew that my shop was open and yeah. I had it. And no no soul knew I had my yeah. hoodie on and I was yeah. jogging, but I wasn't jogging to jog. I yeah. jogged to the TV flyers and yeah. I did that. And here's the craziest thing that I got to tell you this. I didn't, when I was doing it, I didn't believe it was going to work. No, I just said, you know what? I got nothing to lose. Let me just try it for a week. Yeah. I did it for three days. Nothing happened for first three days. And I was like, man, this is so messed up. It was cold, man. And, yeah. and in L.A., where I used to live, it's not just one car and then you go one block is one car. I'm talking about there's like 150 cars in one block. Every street, yeah. Like literally, uh, they're stacked up on, on top of each other like next to – like it's crazy, the amount yeah. of population. So I distributed a lot, and I'm coming back three days later. I'm like, dude, that was a lot of flyers. I, I printed them. I mm -hmm. distributed I cut them. I put yeah. them all there. And then you got to carry this like four or five pounds with you, yeah. and it gradually decreases. So I did that for three days. Nothing yeah. happened. Mm -hmm. On the fourth day, man, it, I had to dig so deep to get my butt off the bed and just go do it. But mm -hmm. on the fourth day, I had one client that came in, and, and, and she said, I don't know what happened. I wanted to car. I wanted to take my car for auto repair, and yeah. magically, it was out of nowhere. I got your flyer. Can you fix my car? You're close yeah. to me, and I'm like, "Wow, this is yeah. so cool!" It happened. So that's how I started doing it, and then yeah. I hired the company. 
this, this, this. I want to make almost $2 million in my business yeah. every year. You don't see mechanics making that kind of money. Yeah. And it was just that one simple thing that I did the that difference. nobody wanted me to yeah. do. But it was hard, man. I'm telling you. Yeah. That was like one of the hardest things I've ever done. What? It I think our gut knows. It to a different level. I think our gut actually knows the things that will work, but we're trying to find ways to not have to do them because they're uncomfortable. Like that's really the, what it breaks down to a lot of the time. It's like we have a good, someone's told us to do it. Part of our gut knows we do it a certain level, a certain effort will win, but we don't want to sell out and lose. So we try to find ways in our heads to just not do that thing. But you kept doing it because the gut of you, the heart of you said, like, this could pan out if you just give it. You don't want to, but if you do, it does. And sure enough, it did. And it's usually going to be that thing that nobody else is doing. That's how it goes. So tell me about the gradual growth. So now you're a speaker. I know you, you talk about identity and your identity does need to, I don't know if you could call it change, but maybe you do, but shift. I think you call it a change? So it's, it's called identity shift. Change is difficult, but shifting a, a nuance, the way you think, the way you operate, shift. your beliefs, it'll shift and change everything. So let's say I don't know nothing about shift and, and I come to you. I'm like, listen, yeah. my business is making, I'm making $150,000 a year. Yeah. I like to make 300000 mm -hmm. What are a couple of the remedies that you will prescribe to me? Well, first of the, the way I look at it is we all of us call it an income identity and who you are depicts the actions that you that you take without even thinking about it. It's like your identity, is, it's the actions you take without the act, thinking about the actions you take. And so if you're at that level, you're like, hey, I'm trying to scale the business, do whatever it is. It's not always going to be boiling down to uh, like, hey, what strategy do you have to do? Because nowadays there's too much information. There's too much tools. It's just way too much. But a lot of people still fall short. It's not because of lack of tools or information. It's because you lack the right person to apply the tools and information. You're not, you're not here the person you're supposed to be just yet. If you were, you'd already have that thing. So what I do is I look at what are the, we call them limiting beliefs, but really what are the limiting actions, limiting factors, and where, when I ask you to do something specific, do you create conflict? Which is like, oh, I can't do it because the moment I hear that, now I get to find out why you're at that level you're at and you can't get past it. Because you'll tell me in that why you'll give me the exact answer. And then I'm like, all right, well, that's bull. So let me figure out really what it is. Let's unpack that, change that, move that, and become the person who doesn't, doesn't look at that like, oh, that's not what I do. I can't do that. And you now say, I'm the person that does that. Because when you become the person that does that, it's easy, it flows, it doesn't kill you, and you get way ahead of the game farther than everybody else does. That is awesome. I guess discipline is doing things that you don't like to do. So Huge. That's, it is. that's definitely that. So here's my question. Did your NFL background and what you do, because I think it's a, it's a, it's a game of inches. It's mm -hmm. a game of team. Uh, everybody goes together. You do have a coach. You do have a mentor in all different levels. How much does NFL, you playing in NFL, contributes, and does that make it easier for you to get into business? No. <laughs> the NFL <laughs> contributed in a sense of it allowed me to – like, people will, like, talk to me. Like, oh, hey, uh, you know, what, what, NFL, cool. What, what do you do? And I'll get that split second. But after that, like, immediately after that, I have to have something of value. If I have nothing of value, you're not listening much more. So the NFL, it, it just it gives you, like, the, the fact that someone will listen to you for a moment. Because you got to realize, there's a lot of guys in the NFL that, like, they can't speak English clearly. Like, it's amazing. They're just not the best human beings in the world. Um, but what it did teach me was how to handle adversity and overcome and just sell out. Like, like you talked about, you just sold out. You got up at four in the morning. You just sold out, dude. Like when I'm playing football, I'm running full speed, and I don't know if I'm going to catch this guy, but then it's me and him in a little area, and I, either I'm going to tackle him or he's going to run by me. And I just – I literally launch and sell out and give everything. And at first, you may miss a tackler too. After a while, you start to read him a little bit better, and you know where which direction to sell out towards, and now you start making a bunch of tackles at a bunch of plays. Same thing in life. You got to go and sell out at something. Maybe you whiff and miss the tackle. But when you get to the point of like, now I can, I make that play, you can start selling out way easier, way better. And now you start racking up the tackles, racking up the points, and it goes better. So NFL taught me how to sell out, but it didn't teach me how to be good in business. How often do we have to sell out in our business? I feel like we always have to sell out or our competition is selling out themselves and they're getting ahead. Exactly. So yeah. have that problem Someone's also. doing it. Someone's going after that same dollar. Either you're going to get it or they're going to get it. It's the person who's willing to go. We know this. This is not new information. It's, it's logic, but it's hard to understand it in the moment that it matters. Like when it matters, you got to know it right then and take the right action. Because if you think about it in hindsight, you can't go back to the moment. You got to know it and be that person. Like it's why the identity matters. 
if you're that person, you'll feel it in the moment. You'll make the choice in the moment because it's who you are. If it's not who you are, you'll always miss it and be looking back on it. That is awesome. That is awesome. What, are, what, are couple, what are a couple of things that you think are so difficult for people in business or in the mm -hmm. individuals to shift based on you coaching yeah. this many people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are a couple of things that just keeps coming back? And is it the pride? Is it the ego? Is it's, it asking it's... for help? What is it? So part of it's ask for help, part of it's pride and ego, but a lot of it is I don't want to put myself out. There's a fear of putting myself out there and not succeeding at the level I want or somebody calling me out because I'm not the greatest at X, Y, or Z. So a lot of people when they're starting, they just don't put themselves out. They do what I call safe work. I make a cool website and I do some videos behind the scenes and I do whatever, but people don't do lives like this. They don't put themselves out. They don't boldly say, listen, I'm the best at this, pay me for this. And, and when you get to that level, people pay you. Before that, no one's going to walk up and say, I like your video. Can I send you some money in your inbox? Like, that's not how it works. You've got to get to the point of putting something the out there. It. Yeah, you got, you got to the put it out there. It. <laughs> I like your video. Let me send you some money. That yeah. doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. If it did, I should have been a millionaire just off of the amount of videos. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. That video would be amazing. So it, it, it's crazy. So let me ask you a question. Yeah, yeah. What is the outcome that people usually want? Let's say, I know I want to make more money. I want to be healthy. I want to do this. I want to have a better relationship with my mom, dad, family, children, all of these different things. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, when people come to you, is it more on the monetary side or is it more on the personal side? Well, I think it's always a matter of both. No one's, no one's saying I want to make more money just to make more money. No one's saying I want a better relationship just a relationship. The biggest thing people are looking for is, is, I believe, peace and control and freedom. Like peace of mind, control of my life, and freedom to do what I want. Now, for some people, it means more money. For some people, I make enough money, but they feel confined in a relationship. And so what we're all looking for is a sense of peace, control, and freedom. And when they come to me, I have to figure out what that is, and then I have to share with them how to close the gap for that. And so for me, it's like, hey, you need to make more money. Okay, because if you make more money, your wife will get off your back. You can do whatever job you want. You can travel. Cool. Let's figure out how, what parts of your identity must shift to make that money, right? Some people have a good job. They like their career, but they're not having that freedom in the relationship, right? They feel confined. Then I got to go and say, hey, what part of your identity is ruining your relationship so you feel confined? You can't, you can't communicate with your wife. You can't be a good parent. Like, what is that? And so what I'm looking for is not how to make more money or how to make whatever personal thing. It's like, how do I get you to have peace, control, and freedom? That is awesome. And, and what is your recommendation for people? Is it more, how, how important is it for individuals to have a mentor and a coach? Because oh, I know paramount. people resist it. Yeah, I have one. I, have, I, I literally have a team of three, well, 11 people, but I have three like, definitive coaches, I would call it, that work with me now. Every level I want to get to, I need someone that's been there or I was going to pull me there. You can't coach yourself. No matter what you think, you cannot coach yourself. So you've got to have someone that's been down the, the path or has got other people there to guide you. Because that's the only way you get there. It's only way. I mean, I was a professional athlete, best in the world, and I had a coach. So if I had a coach, best in the world, you better go get a damn coach too. You better get yourself a coach. You now, do it. here's my other question. I got last Let's one because I got, I got a client. I got to hop over to in a second. I apologize. They, they come, no problem. Yeah. So here's my last question: If somebody cannot afford a coach, what yeah. should they do? Read and apply, and then what you do is you read and apply like crazy. Super uncomfortable until you can afford a coach. You got it because the thing is, is you're going to read books for free, podcasts for free, and, and then apply what you can to the best of your ability. It's going to draw you like crazy and then get to a point where you can charge or find a way to make enough income for one thing, but take all of that and give it to a coach because that investment will quadruple your pace to get to where you want to be. Thank you so much for taking this time being here. If yeah, there's anything very you welcome. and my team can do for you, you shoot, shoot, shoot us an email, shoot us a DM, let us know. Yeah. We'll definitely love to serve you. Thank you so I much. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank you too, man. You got it, brother. Talk to you All later. Right. Bye-bye.